really sure I am glad I got the car washed and then it rained. What's up Ramblers? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Amber with the Ramblin' Richardsons. So, we are less than 24 hours away from our trip to Dallas. <clears throat> and I'm sure that there are a few out of you out there that are wondering, well, what are you going to do with all of your animals? I did mention that my mom is going to be here, but she is by no means a reptile keeper. So I did have to try very hard to make it as easy as possible for her when she's here, but there are a few tips and tricks that you can do if you do need to go out of town. My baby is throwing a fit right now and her mom is trying to put her down. So first thing on the list of things that you can do to prep yourself for going out of town is to understand your animals feeding schedules. There are many animals that do not require to be fed every single day. Snakes is a really good example most snakes don't need to be fed every single day. And the same applies for other animals that don't necessarily need to be fed every day. Duke back here <clears throat> is my veiled chameleon. He only needs to eat every two or three days. So tomorrow morning before we leave, Duke is gonna get some of these. And here I've got some crickets that are being gut loaded on some leafy green leaf lettuce down here. So what we'll do is go ahead and throw more than what he would need, more than he would be able to eat in a single day. So probably maybe six to 10 of uh, these crickets, probably dusted in calcium. And so I'll put those in his enclosure. I won't feed him off the tongs or in a cup like I normally do. I am just gonna throw those in there and he will be able to hunt over the several days that we are gone. The same thing goes for my leopard gecko, Sheila. Tomorrow morning, I will feed Sheila several crickets by just dusting them in calcium. They've already been gut loaded and I'll just throw probably around the same amount, six or 10 crickets into her enclosure so that she can eat as many as she needs. And there are going to be some that are left over that she can hunt over the next 36 hours after that. The axolotls, beans, and Frank, well, you can't see Frank right now. They are animals that typically need to be fed every single day. Fasting your axolotl for one day is not a problem to give them a chance to kind of clear out everything in their system if they need to. Typically, this is when we would do a major water change. So tonight we're gonna do a nice fresh water change for them and give them the last of their food they have not eaten today. I'm gonna feed them tonight and then tomorrow they will most likely have a bowel movement and I can move, get that out of their enclosure, make sure that's clean before my mom gets here. She can always spot clean with my turkey baster that's up there to remove anything if they don't make on a timely manner. But that is a good option for them. Feed them the night before, real late, or in the morning, the day of, and they can go the next 36 hours without food. So I may hold off until tomorrow morning to feed them. The fish tank up here has a couple of Amano shrimp and some, uh, one nearite snail, and I think some rabbit snails or whatever they're called that came in on some hydrocotyl that I had. So really those guys don't need a ton of food at all. An extra large pinch of food should be sufficient for them to go through the three days. And again, we'll feed them tomorrow. Maybe do a light water change. We're low on water from evaporation. Maybe take a little water out tomorrow morning, 
put a little in so they have nice fresh water. The probably most complicated is going to be Johnny. Where's Johnny? Right here in this enclosure. Johnny is my peacock day gecko and he's very very small very very fast so right now I have his dish soaking so I can clean it in the morning we will prepare some Pangea crested gecko prepared diet mix looks like baby food and I'll just he's very small he doesn't need very much so I'll just make an extra large batch for him so he can eat as much as he needs and he should be okay with the leftover food for the next day or so until I can come home and clean the dish out and give them some fresh food. I've already taken care of the isopods. They've been fed in water. They have some of the leafy greens from the last round of crickets that we had. Uh, they did not eat all of the lettuce, so they are breaking that down. There were a few crickets that die. That always inevitably happens. So I went ahead and threw those bodies of the dead crickets in there for them to break down. They seem to enjoy the protein. And there was a leftover earthworm in Frank's tank. I gave him a leftover uh, earthworm that Beans didn't eat. And I think he spit it back up sometime in the night. So he wasn't going to eat it. And it was dead. So I gave it to the big culture of isopods that we have so that they can go ahead and eat it. Again, they like protein. So they'll be okay and I'll miss them down in the morning. I already miss it, the small one. So that's pretty much everybody on the list, but there are things that need to happen daily. This is something that I have to rely on my mom for. So we went around and took one of these pink pens easily removes off of the glass and went ahead and wrote some instructions for my mom on each enclosure. This will help her understand what needs to happen without having to write it down on a list like this that may be able to lost, misplaced somehow. So <clears throat> let's take a look at what we got on each enclosure for a daily basis. Okay, starting with the fish tank. One pinch of food a daily, just a tiny little pinch. I'm gonna top off the tank either tonight or tomorrow. So that's all she'll need to do. One pinch of food daily. Come down here to a beans enclosure. Two small bottles every four to six hours. You can see I have a bottle floating in here that was a frozen water bottle. We help keep his tank nice and cool because they don't have a chiller. They're extremely expensive. So we use water bottle method. And then we have Frank's tank two large bottles every four to six hours. So I have small bottles and large bottles. And Frank gets large bottles because he's in a 20 long breeder. Hey there, Frank. Looking quite nice, my guy. And Beans gets two small bottles because he is in, I think it's a 10, maybe 15 gallon tank. Um, he's a little bit smaller and tank smaller. Doesn't take as much to cool down. <clears throat> so that's what he gets. Here's Duke's enclosure. He's hiding back there. You can see his little tail. Hey, buddy. Hey. Okay, so mist it in the morning. Fill water dripper. Here's his water dripper. So just fill it up. Set it back here. He should be good. Again, he's gonna have plenty of crickets to eat. All right, buddy. I'm gonna give you some crickets. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Duke's lights and Johnny's lights are on timers. So my mom doesn't have to worry about turning the lights on. If you have animals that require UVB or heat lamps, they need to be on a 12, 12 cycle, 12 hours on, 12 hours off for their UVB. So they have a sleep cycle essentially. So they have a circadian rhythm um these are set on timers so my mom just have to manually turn them on and off if you don't have a timer definitely suggest you get one especially if you're going to be going out of town and you have nobody to watch your animals then you're going to need a timer now the animals need to be misted right, duke's enclosure needs to be misted and i've got one of these just pump it with this and then point and spray with the handle. 
but you can also get a misting system and hook that up to your enclosures and it'll automatically mist. I don't have the money for that and the space. So my animals have to get misted manually, which is fine. Here we go, we have Johnny's enclosure mist in the mornings. So just in the morning on the top, I don't want my mom to open up this door because he's been bum, ru bum rushing me and he actually got out a couple of weeks ago. He hopped out right up here at the lip and was on top of the cage and had to catch him. So he actually did make it out. You gotta be very wary of him. So she's just gonna mist from the top. That's just mesh right up here, metal mesh. She can just go ahead and mist from the top with the mister. Last but not least is Sheila. This may be hard to see because it's written in white, but it says water in dish below. That says water and dish below. There's an arrow down here. Here is her dish. And then we have Miss Lightly on this side. So this is her moist side, her warm side with her moist hide down there. So we want to mist on that side and leave this side to be more dry. She is in shed. <clears throat> so it's really all about preparation. If you have enclosures that need water changes that are aquatic enclosures do that the night before ensure that the water parameters are correct before you leave top off any tanks that you need to make sure that your animals have water and food when you leave have somebody trusty that can come over and either check on them or be able to stay at your house to check on them <clears throat> and then Write the instructions on the glass. That way, there's no questions. Makes it very easy for the instructions to be followed. If you don't have somebody who can come turn your lights on and off or mist your animals and enclosures down, make sure you invest in a timer and a misting system. That way they can go ahead and get water and light and heat as they need it. <clears throat> Those are very important when you're keeping exotic animals like reptiles and amphibians and even uh, you know, fish and stuff like that. Anyways, as far as the dogs, they're super simple. You know, feed them twice a day, make sure they have water, take them outside to go potty. Since she'll be staying here with her own dog, shouldn't be too hard of a task for her to take care of the pups. Anyways, tomorrow's going to be a long day. I still have lots of stuff to do in the reptile room tonight to get ready for tomorrow. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Remember life's about the journey, not the destination. And we'll see you on the next video. Make sure you go down there and like and subscribe. Sheila's been watered. She has crickets. Duke's enclosure's not on yet, but his water's been filled. He's been misted and he's got crickets. We've topped off the water to the fish tank. They've been fed, beans fed, Frank fed, water bottles floating for both of them. Keep them nice and cool. Johnny's been misted. Down there is his Pangea and that little leaf. We can eat. Life not fed yet. <laughs> Poor thing. <clears throat> And in the morning, we will make some uh, Pangea prepared Cresto. Man, I can't talk. <laughs>